uh, consuming non-veg, eating non-veg, all of that. It, one is its violence towards the animals. That's true. But more than that, it causes cancer. You sell your own body, your own health, your own fitness, your life for someone else to make money. That's exactly what was happening. I think only Swamiji can give this kind of a perspective to us. Where Swamiji told how we all eat to become healthy. We all eat to make sure our body is fine, fit for us to live longer. But we eat something that we, which we know is going to cause cancer to our body, which is going to affect our body. But knowing it just to make money because they want to make trillions of dollars, they promote non-veg and they make you eat non-veg and you fall for it just for that temporary taste that you get. Actually, just yesterday I was watching a video, a documentary on how you know, the skin bleaching, it's extremely dangerous. It's illegal. It's banned in many countries also. And there are many products that are like specific ones which are known to cause cancer when it's banned. And though it's illegal, so I'm not going to be mentioning the name of the country. This is a documentary that I was watching. It is clearly illegal, but it is sold on the streets. Like you can, you can go to any, any, whether it's a mall or even if it's a grocery store, you get it. You get these creams in abundance. And uh, so the person who's doing the documentary, the person goes and so like tests the chemicals in it and it's shocked that like poisons like mercury and hydroquinone all these things are in higher levels like extremely high levels so if uh, with continuous usages and people are also getting affected yet just to get that satisfaction of that one time how it adds up a glow or whatever they call it as just to feel that you know lightness in the skin for some time people go to the extent of risking their life itself it's uh, they're okay with getting cancer that's that's when i understood that it's it's not just it's not just that okay people are thinking it has, oh maybe we should, uh, maybe it's, this is more healthy or not no many people are even aware that their life itself is going to be affected cancer can come but still, what makes us choose it? What is it that's making us go towards it if we just come back and see it? The cognition that you carry about life. When you feel you're going to end at some point, right now itself you want to get as much as possible. You're not... Worried about your future. It's more of now what, how much I can get out of this. Actually, that many times Swamiji has told that a temporary gratification that we need for our system. Let's say um, so many companies we know, we go eat burgers, pizzas, everywhere. There's so many videos and you to, there are so many things that we have, uh, which we have seen. So many documentaries, so much of awareness is being brought about many soft drinks, so many things. But for that moment, that temporary gratification for our taste, we go fall prey to it every single time. And we then we'll fall ill, then we'll go to medicine. It the whole thing, it's a it's like it, that whole thing is one industry which is using your health for them to gain money. Many times, that is why Swamiji keeps telling, eat as per your goals. You eat what, what you uh, eat, that's what you become. When you constantly don't care, when you say, just now, let's, this is cheaper, let me buy this nice, tastier. And for once only, I'm going to eat. Once in a while only, I'm going to eat. You start like that. It pulls you into the delusion. You keep falling back for it again and again and again. Actually, as uh, so many of you are watching right now, all of you can just go to Twitter and join our discussion. Just go to Twitter, 
Use the hashtag, hashtag Kailasa Votes, hashtag veg or non veg, and tweet your opinion. Just go to Twitter and tweet so we can read out what you are sharing as your opinion. And we can also like we can also interact with you, so it'll be a very nice discussion that will be have uh, we will be having. And a powerful vakya to this. If you all remember, we all had Swamiji sharing about this having intense vakya to this just on this concept of kalpa and what Swamiji had revealed about it. So let's take a few minutes, go to Twitter, and share your opinion. And before that, before we enter into that discussion, we have a small video for you where Swamji explains about how you have to eat for what you want to be. Eat as per your goals. Eat as per what you want to be. Let's watch that video now. I am going to share with you all. I am also making it as practical as possible. Like, I, I wanted, wanted this to be practiced, practiced by, by E. Kailasavasis. See, See, whom I call E. Kailasavasis, you know, people who attend morning satsang and who do yoga in their own homes create a beautiful Kailasa ecosystem. I was talking about the ideology for eating. What is supposed to be the ideology for eating? Decide what you want in your life. You want to be very active, alive, constantly moving towards what you want to achieve in your life, to manifest what do you want, then naturally align your food for that. That's it. In six months, you can evolve an amazing, customized ideology for eating. When you do Nirahara Samyama, you will awaken your bio-intelligence. What suits you? What does not suit you? What kind of a juice makes you feel energetic and what makes you feel tired when to eat ideology and policies for eating you can develop if you just do one or two nirahara samyama i tell you Nirahara Samyama is the best way to develop an independent policies and ideology about eating. And same way Kutakesha Samyama. Try Kutakesha Samyama to develop ideas and policies about sleeping. How you should sleep, when you should sleep. How many hours is best? You can evolve your own strategy. Understand? Evolving your own strategy in every field, your own policy and your own strategy for yourself in every field can be achieved through integrity. If you apply integrity as a strategy, in every field you will evolve your own policies, your own ideas. I tell you, anyone who has evolved his own strategies, his own policies for food, sleep, sex, tiredness, to deal with boredom. All this, if you develop your own strategies and ideas by applying integrity as the strategy, you will achieve anything you want. I tell you. 
apply integrity as the strategy. All of you can now go to Twitter, use the hashtag, hashtag Kailasavuts, hashtag Wedge or non -wedge, and tweet your understanding. What is the click that you are getting from this as we are sharing with you? So we were discussing some time before, we were discussing about this Kalpa. So the question that I have for all of you today is, how is this Kalpa, understanding of Kalpa, Swamji had explained in Satsang day before today, Telling how just the understanding that you have about Kalpa will heal you. Kalpa is the fourth unit of time. Like day is the time taken for earth to rotate around itself. And month is the time taken for moon to go around the earth. And year is the time taken for earth to go around the sun. and Kalpa is a time taken for this entire Surya Mandala, the whole galaxy itself, to go around the Mahakailasa. Swamji said that just by cognizing, even intellectually understanding the concept of Kalpa can free you from so many uh, fears, especially the fear of impermanence, etc. How? First, how how is that? What what is what is your understanding about kalpa, and how do you understand it? When somebody saying it, you get out of the fear of impermanence. How do you understand it? And how this vote that is coming up, the Hindu voting, is how you feel that Hindu voting system is going to help in reaching out all these sciences to the world. So all of you can go to Twitter and share. We so have, have this Aya back again with, who has tweeted. Can you share the relationship between the understanding of Kalpa and the thoughts per second? And also the relationship between the thoughts per second and the decision of what kind of food you take in. Beautiful question, Aya. I'll actually answer about it. See, you have attended the Darshan and programs of Swamiji. So when you sit during the Darshan, how do you feel? You will not, not know. You will be so enormous. Like you will be so much in love. You will not know how many minutes have passed by. Time just flies. Suddenly you will realize it just feel like five minutes but already two hours have passed. Whenever you are in love, time feels like it just goes so fast. Same way when you are bored. Time feels like you feel like a long time. Look at your watch. Not even five minutes have passed. It feels like one hour has already gone. By. Time seems to move extremely slow. The thought, as the thought per second rate increases, we start feeling time is moving slow. The perception of time will become extremely limited. So you will start having a narrow vision for life. When your thought per second rate decreases, like when you are in love, at that, at that time, the TPS is extremely low. TPS means thought per second rate. So that TPS rate is extremely low. So the perception that you have about time is vast. So when your perception about time is so expanded, when you perceive time in such large quantity, that is when that is why you, when your TPS is low, you will be able to cognize the signs of kalpa or like the unit of kala as kalpa in a much better way. How you cognize? You just imagine it. You cannot cognize more than a certain number of days or month, whatever unit you put in, you cannot just can you visualize, let's say 20 days, 30 days, you immediately tend to call it like a month. You come to shorter measuring. When I say 80 days, you don't measure it as 80 days. 
we immediately jump to no no months no so two months two and a half months that's the way we calculate it why our mind cannot cognize more than a certain number so the units that we use is very important when you call co- start cognizing the unit even intellectually you start feeling a an expanse happening in your system these are all my understandings of course like so actually i wanted to share also um uh, this ayya you had for the question that you had asked i remember in a uh, conquering time webinar somebody beautifully explains even um this is a click that i got just now as we were all discussing the binary oscillation between the moments of powerfulness and the moments of powerlessness that understanding when that binary oscillation is happening that is time so you can use some generalized units of time for whole world to be in understanding to fun- function in a certain way but for each individual time happens as per that binary oscillation between the moments of powerfulness and powerlessness the associated so actually, powerfulness and associated yeah, powerlessness and actually when uh, swami ji was talking in the satsang about uh, now he in uh, defo say satsang swami ji was saying that how when sometimes that's why time will become very slow for you will become very fa- fast for you see i just realized that as per the thoughts per second that swamji was explaining when you are powerful your thoughts per second will naturally be low and that is when you feel oh, time is more there is enough time and you can do whatever you want the moments of your powerlessness your thoughts per second is high you feel time is running fast there's so much running in you so you feel like time is running so fast so time for every each one of us is just this oscillation between what you associate as powerfulness and what you associate as powerlessness and when you are powerful the thoughts per second being less and when you are powerless the thoughts per second being more this whole thing is time but just for us to function in an uh, proper understanding we all use certain units and like she told that's a uh, that's a beautiful point actually where because we cannot our mind is trained to be only in that binary we will never we are never trained to think vast even when you go to school when you are taught from young age so society teaches you only to think in this frame that is why when kids enter the school they visualize so much about life when i grow up i'll become a superhero i will fly i will get powers and i will become like the cartoon that i see all of that by the time that child passes the third grade fourth grade they will know i have simply no other choice i have to become i will study 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 i'll just become another doctor another normal teacher another engineer that's all all of our minds it's like a factory all of our minds are narrowed down to not let us to cognize the vastness of life or time actually we have many people that tweeted i am just seeing i think i missed a few of the tweets so i think this the ai had actually tweeted earlier certainly we calculate our possibility based on how much time we have how we measure kala just hearing about kalpa starts building subtle brain grooves op- opening the inner space just knowing about kalpa you know you have more than enough you can be in tune with kala beautiful understanding aya that's actually a very beautiful way you have put it and also this i i just wanted to tell you see you will be able to experientially understand this because i have seen many people who are part of the paramashiva ganas they will feel so much work is there and i'll maybe give few hours what is going to happen sometimes it may not happen or i don't know what how much i will be able to do but just the space that swami ji gives the teamly that swami ji gives i have heard so many people talk they don't know how the time will seem so like small time they would have spent but they would have done so much in that small time something would have happened swami ji will just make it happen whatever is their commitment for that time you are part of parmashiva ganas and many times you would have experiences actually if you just think in that line you will understand how whether you logically cognize what swamiji tells or not but just because of the feeling connection that we all have to swamiji 
Swamiji makes us experience and live in that space. You can share with us. Uh, so we have uh, Ma Devi Karani who has tweeted. So all of you can also become part of this discussion. See, especially if you would have heard Devi Faristi Satsang or even uh, listened to it yesterday. What Swamiji has been talking about Kalpa, we are having a Vakya Arthasadas about that. And it's important that we have Vakya Arthasadas so we understand it in a much more deeper level. So all of you can take a few minutes, go to Twitter, use the hashtag, hashtag Kailasa Votes and hashtag Veg or non and tweet your click. So like that Ma Devi Karani has tweeted, understanding Kalpa is grace itself. Listening about Kalpa puts us into purified space Unclutched space. So blessed to be in this era with Bhagawan. Thank you. That's so true, Ma. I also feel so blessed that all of us are in this human body and having the ability, the possibility to catch what Bhagawan is revealing to us. And it's so, we are too blessed that when he is in this physical plane, we too are in this physical form that too as a human being. Having the possibility to understand, to cognize, to experience and to get enlightened. That's so beautiful. And uh, Dits had also shared another click. One more click about Kalpa. Knowing and operating from the unit of Kalpa expands your context for sustaining your life. True. And others' life. So you begin to have the larger vision for life. How to preserve and continue for Kalpa. This is like... The stem of non-violence. Hashtag Kailasa votes. Absolutely, yeah. Actually, that's why even if you want to cognize this term Kalpa, Swamiji says, only if you're established in that Paramashanta, having that pure peace inside, inner peace, without any violence, agitation, only then you'll be able to cognize this term Kalpa. So that's so beautiful. Every time, actually, I even try to visualize it. It just feels like how vast it is. Just visualizing earth itself is so big. And visualizing earth going around sun, which is 10 times or 100 times more bigger. And when visualizing like this, there are so many which are going around Kailasa. Then how vast, how huge should Kailasa be? Just cognizing that, just trying to visualize that itself is making me feel like vast, expanded. And not just that, when we visualize that, we will understand. That's a very important point. We will understand for what we are giving priority in our life. How we strategize about life. How, what is the way we cognize about life. That whole thing completely changes. It's very important. This you live only once. That whole thing, it became such a deep cognition for so many people. Oh, you live only once. So just do it. whatever you can do in this time. Grab as much as possible and experience everything and die. That whole thought current instills violence. When Swamiji told, I understood in one level. Now when I'm actually... Talking, I'm understanding more as to how and all the violence happens in us. Mm -hmm. Because we only, we, our whole thinking becomes so selfish, not, I should not even say selfish, so restricted just to this body. But even for our own future existence, we start creating destruction. See, it's like, let's say you're stuck in a maze. Right? And uh, if you feel like, okay, you're stuck in that forever, like, you don't know there's any possibility out. What do you feel? You start trying to make your life better within that. Okay, maze is too hypothetical. Let's say you're in a house. Okay, you've, uh, you are locked up in one single room and you don't know where the key is and you feel like, okay, that's all. I don't have the possibility to get out. So let me make this life itself best. So you try to arrange your room and try to get everything best in within your room itself. So... And you start cursing God many times whenever you feel like, oh God, I have nothing to do. I don't have this. I don't have that. But in reality, the whole, you are actually, you just need to open the door, see outside because you have a huge mansion. It's just one small door which you are locked inside and you think that's all is yours. 
you by and by you forget the possibility of experiencing the other dose so what happens is the cognition the strategy for like everything is within that one room now if you if somebody is telling no you actually have just come out and see then the very strategy of life how you feel about yourself itself gets so expanded absolutely so when you cognize the uh, possibility that you exist in so many multiple dimensions if you the first click when swamiji said about kalpa the first click i got was that means like if some if this whole thing is revolving around kailasa it's not just sun it's it's the entire galaxy going around kailasa that means how vast how huge should kailasa be and it's very clearly described in kurma purana how there are 14 levels of lokas atala 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 patala like this and bhur bhu suvar like this different lokas are there and swam ji says at the same at the time you can exist in all these 14 different lokas that means you have your dimensions existing in that lokas so what does that even mean so what we are trying to because we feel only this is us we are trying to fit in like the best to experience the best within this life itself when we see understand cognize we actually are existing in those many lokas it's like you're inside the room locked and someone is telling you just come out and see you're actually in a huge mansion and the entire mansion is yours how you start feeling inside you how excited would you be like to go and experience it you know you are no more going to be cursing god you are no more going to be complaining to yourself feeling restricted all these things see actually i don't even get this concept of this that people say okay you need to feel better feel good you know like just say it as words but uh, but was they are still exposed to the same kind of comments in the society where people are still treating you the same way based on your looks based on how you maybe a certain factors are deciding who you are so that makes us feel okay restricted life is done that's why people can even think of a possibility of suicide is yes, how can someone even think of suicide so all these these are like some uh, different clicks that i am getting all of you can also become a part of this discussion it's so amazing that uh, this ma devi karani even ma balananda has tweeted just now i am seeing her tweet i'll read out her tweet also so all of you can go to twitter use the hashtag hashtag kailasa votes hashtag veg or non veg and tweet so ma balananda has tweeted does a yuga have unit of time or does it transcend time actually ma you uh, go see kalpa is described as one day of brahma brahma has one day which is which already has multiple yugas within it so one kalpa already has multiple yugas within it um i think in satsang also somji was sharing about one yuga is a uh, one kalpa uh, I, because somji actually rephrased it somji told it as one kalpa because uh, that's when i actually googled and saw uh, one yuga Uh, so one kalpa has multiple yugas in it oh. so kalpa is a much larger term and that one kalpa is just one day of brahma if you remember in the in arunachala purana where uh, parameshwara is described as just a light shaft he starts growing both up and down he just expands and both vishnu and brahma go for searching the head and uh, brahma goes to search uh, the head and uh, 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 vishnu goes to search the feet and it says so when uh, uh, brahma starts moving upwards at one point of a time he sees the uh, fl- uh, flower tarambu which was in uh, uh, parameshwar's ear falling down so uh, uh, brahma says okay so how long have you been falling down and then uh, the tarambu replies saying oh, what you are asking me like this i already saw four brahmas before you 
So just imagine and see, just seeing four Brahmas before Brahm, this Brahma means how many kalpas would have gotten over. And for those many kalpas, each kalpa is just one day, not a year, but a day of Brahma. So how old is this universe? This actually brings us to a lot of questions and so exciting to even think about this. I'm sure each of you who are watching right now, when you would have had many clicks, you might have understood it in a different way. You might have cognized it in a different way, total different way. So we are really curious to listen from even each of you just to listen to the understandings actually this idea that you had shared that was wonderful like to even cognize these terms in 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 like i'll just read it out again this i really like this click subtly we calculate our possibility based on how much time we have how we measure kala just hearing about kalpa starts building the subtle brain groups opening the inner space just knowing about kalpa you know you have more than enough you can be in tune with kala actually i like that part about how we calculate our possibility based on time see you feel like okay your youth is going to end within this period that is when you feel like see i have only one life then okay I will, the best of it is my youth so in my youth itself i should just party enjoy that's why people go drink have drugs even though they know it affects them, affects their body, mind, their entire system. Swamiji was actually saying in that uh, example, see, we go for gymming just for our health. We go gym and we go to the gym, we do exercises to build our muscles so that our body is healthy and we have a healthy life. But you start falling for it and you start, let's say one example, you, you want to play sports, you like sports, and you really feel like by running, you become healthy, you become, you achieve better health, you start playing it. Then you go to competitions, just for fun you started, but you fall into such unconsciousness, what you started as for your health. You risk your health, you destroy your health, because you start then just to win that one competition, that one day, that one medal, that one Card, one tag that's hanging on your neck becomes so important. You you put so much of medicines, drugs into your steroids. system, steroids into your system, and you are ready to destroy your health for that one day, one event, one time, which is life defining for you as you think. So look at the irony. You start for your health, but at one point you destroy your own health. Just for that one momentary gratification that you get. Yes, you may all tell, no, no, if I get a medal, then I will be all over on newspapers. Then you will get name and fame. Then that's all. It's just we have only a very constricted way of looking at life. Actually, we have Anand and Bala Subraman, uh, Subramanyam Ayya who has tweeted. Uh, for I think for the veg or non-veg, he has tweeted using the hashtag, hashtag Kailasa votes, hashtag veg or non -witch, hashtag Nityananda. I vote for veg as Swami says, we can't kill and eat one and still say love others. <laughs> yes, I absolutely. That's a nice, nice click because as Swami says, that just shows our hypocrisy because you go, you pet a dog and then that's also an animal and you pet a dog, at the same time you go and kill a chicken and eat. How? And I also, when I see people who grow goats just to kill and eat, who grow animals just to kill and eat them, how you give so much of love, take care of it, and then suddenly just kill that animal and eat it, that shows hypocrisy. That That's a nice tweet. Say, so I request all of you, actually, really, I, I want all of you also to join this discussion where we are discussing about this fourth unit of time, Kalpa. What is Kalpa according to you? What did you understand it as? Even if you had just understood. Swamiji also shared the visual uh, representation of it. A beautiful visual representation of it which shows what each of these terms actually mean. So all of you can just take a few minutes, go to Twitter, use the hashtags, hashtag Kailasa votes, hashtag Vajjo and tweet your understandings 
your clicks that you have gotten uh, i am also understanding now actually just a small thing for many of you who are watching this for the first time and you do not know what is all this about time kalpa units of time you all can go to kailasa's hdh nityananda parameshwaram facebook page and then you actually have this whole gist of the satsang posted along with a beautiful uh, video of the four units of time you all can see it you all can visit kailasa's hdh nityananda parameshwaram that's a facebook page and you can just scroll down and see the this the whole unit of time a visual representation of the unit of time being posted for us you all can see in the posts the visual representation yes this is a visual uh, i request a video to be played like to everyone you all can see here one rotation of earth around itself is one day earth rotating itself is one day one revolution of the moon around the earth is one month we call it one lunar month and earth rotating around the sun revolution of earth around the sun is one year and the whole sun family the galaxy the galaxy going around, around maha kailasa the meru sandila that becomes one kalpa, kalpa. see uh, actually i request the video to be played all of us can see just see the difference of the speed at which earth rotates just see just for earth to go around all of us can see see at what rate earth is rotating you will see this is 24 hours that means just within that one year how much see one day is this earth rotation you can see its speed to so see its one month and see how in a year to how in a kalpa kalpa the whole galaxy is going around in that speed then just imagine and see what it actually means what this whole thing is actually meaning what how vast this time is i used to think uh, what actually the devatas the devatas are, the devatas are having a very low tps rate that is like for one day of they were like one year one human year is just one day of devata that's why we have the nataraja abhishekam happening at six times like six kala abhishekam it happens at six different times in a year for us so i used to think what does that all mean so are they like really this move very slowly or what does it mean now i am understanding the very perception of time they have is vast how much happens in their time is vast uh, ma divyananda has tweeted what happens during brahma's night ma sorry ma divyananda i think i need to say more puranas i am not really sure of that but ma divyananda what did you understand about this term kalpa what is your understanding what is the click that you have when we use this term kalpa when swam ji explained about it Swamiji said a very beautiful statement. Swamiji said that moment you start even intellectually cognizing this, you will be free from the fear of impermanence. Many fears that you have in your life will just lose its value. So, what did you understand? How do you cognize this? And now, Divya Nanda, I just like your uh, question. It's a unique thing. Uh, this thing, but I think only. Swami will be the only person who can answer it. He is Parameshwara, so only he is the person who can answer the this question of what happened. Actually, but intellectually, what we all do know is that uh, one whole kalpa of hours is just one uh, day, day of Brahma. Brahma. Oh my God! I'm just thinking. See, I, I was just uh, trying to organize. How you all can see here the unit of time being shown for all of us. Just see the. different no my god that means like it's all like shown very slowed down and shown to us this itself shows how it is like the rotation 
and that amount of time that we all are grasping and whenever I visualize uh, Earth, I visualize it as, a, as if it's something stagnant, like standing still Earth. But wow. Okay, so if you get, go to Twitter now, go to Twitter, use the hashtag, hashtag Kailasa votes, hashtag veg or non -veg, and you can also use the hashtag, hashtag Nityananda, since I'm seeing some of you using that also. You all can use any of these three hashtags or all the three and tweet your understanding. What did you understand by it? What did you think about this? See, I was just organizing yesterday and I kept listening to such one. I was just trying to internalize it. I was just thinking, Swamiji is existing in all these 14 planes simultaneously. Swamiji says his form is different, uh, his actions, everything would be different. Just the breathe, but the breathing is the same. Right? The breathing pattern, yes. Breathing pattern is same. I was just trying to organize it. How at uh, the same time he's managing, see, first of all, even to organize how Swamiji is managing in this physical plane, it's just uncomprehendable because he knows every individual personally. Swamiji always say, you're not a number for him. You're a life for him. That is why everything, be it the joy, joy, the joyful moments of your life, or you feel forgot, he will be there to hand on you. He will be there for you, personally knowing about you. So it's something so uh, beautiful. And uh, I was just trying to cognize then just imagine and see Swami is at the same time operating in all the 14 lokas. It's like, wow, too much even trying to cognize. Okay, we have uh, Ma Saras, who is treated with Yananda Ma. So happy to know that you're also watching. Uh, so he has uh, used the hashtag, hashtag Kailasa vote, hashtag with John Orange, hashtag Nityananda. When I read the fourth unit, just the description itself, I felt how vast universe is and realize it can only be experienced at being level education give, no, at being level. Education given in school is mere mind level intellectual. Wrong idea about life given. Such a powerful and a beautiful point you brought and up. And Amar Saras that actually talking about school, it's so true, not just in the context of making us understand the vastness of universe, but even our understanding in this lifetime about us, our existence, when we are as a child, when we are born, we do not have the cognition that, oh, I am going to die soon. But how death is introduced to us, the schools and the society that we are brought up in plays a major role. We are taught as if you live for a short time, do as much as possible, finish by this, finish by that. They only narrowly to thinking that that I was shocked. As long as I was in my school, I never was able to raise questions about death. I was never able to raise questions about universe, existence, cosmos. First of all, it is taught to us as superstition, mythology. Actually, if you remember, the first chapter in science says, uh, defines us as a living mechanism. Uh, like uh, uh, The exact uh, uh, word used, uh, used is, I think, a bio bio you you are described basically you are described as a mechanism with eight different properties. Just telling the, what are the what makes you a living being. It's okay you have movement. The difference between living and non living is thought in terms of okay you have movement. You have you you are having hunger and you um, grow and you reproduce and like this I think some you breathe like this eight different uh, characteristics are given. Depending you, okay, this is what you are. Making us just in a very narrowed way. Making us believe that we are just this much limited. Okay, so just now, so this is Ma Saraswati. So Ma Saraswati Jampal Anishya. I just saw your Twitter name and I think I got, I got distracted. So beautiful, Ma. So I think Ma Saraswati, I'm so happy that you are also there. Because you usually uh, actively participate in markets for this. Come on, you can also tweet your understandings. That's so. Ha I'm so happy we have Ma Divyananda, we have Ma Devi Karani, Ma uh, Saraswati, and Ananda Bala Subramanyam Maya, Dits Aya, who all, all of you who are watching this now. Please do share your understandings, your clicks. 
because it it just turns the entire thing and it see our mind will not allow how many times as a child you have tried organizing about universe i have tried i'll actually think okay how did it all come then i'll just try thinking okay so before this what would have been there when i organize it i'll just pull back because i'll feel there'll be like a fear it immediately comes up where i'll feel like i cannot think further i cannot think more than a certain point our mind because our mind has this thing of exclusive it, it makes everything okay, just this much from this to this is yours it cannot include include things it's more exclusive it excludes things it will not allow you to go beyond a certain point where it feels like it loses it loses the control so that is it never allow you to think further so it's so beautiful that we all are having vacats this about it so we have uh, ma dityananda who has shared now hash using the hashtag nityananda my click is that time becomes more like an eternal canvas of possibility where we are everywhere and exp and experience life from all possible perspectives and playing all the roles in each leela it is not limiting at all as we have been used to wow we playing the leela that that's something very unique to think because true when i just cognize the term where uh, in six sixth verse of um, isha vasya upanishad so very beautifully somsi describes this thing of how the seer and the seen both are one it is the seer who is creating the scene the seer and the seen you understand both of these are one you become the seer means you become enlightened so i actually understand this in a very this so beautiful understanding because now when you cognize time with a huge possibility it's like if i just visualize time is like an eternal canvas you can go on painting and you it will keep filling the color gets added and filled 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 suddenly the comparative reality that we exist in always what do we do if we want to feel good about ourselves we try to compare ourselves with someone something that is why today uh, like the youtube has created so many videos where people criticize some instagram models telling oh they are living a fake life i am not telling they are not or they are i am not commenting about that but i saw the comments below are telling i feel so much better after watching that video and i was like why that's when i understood we as humans tend to live in a more comparative reality we tend to uh, convince us as okay if someone else is suffering then i am all good like i am all suffering you are also suffering then i am good we tend to live in a very comparative reality because our canvas is restricted we feel okay i have only this much space in my canvas of life so i had to get the best drawing to be drawn on it with this imagine and see have an eternal canvas Actually, it just suddenly makes us feel so relaxed absolutely and when you are that whole understanding that life is an eternal canvas that time your fear guilt greed will lose its power over you with mm-hmm. this whole time whether you understand kalpa whether you are able to see yourself after one kalpa all of that is suck, like secondary but just this one thing like swamji told when you cognize this at least intellectually the violence and suffering in you will drop it is so true because if you understand i'm going to live eternally i will not i'm not saying you will go on committing mistakes but the guilt will lose its power over you you will actually start aligning now what you will do oh 10 years of my life i've lived as a robber i kept stealing 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 anyways i've grown up now grown old i'm going to die in few more years what's the point of changing now if i change now then what will happen that's all will be your idea but if you understand that all that you are doing now is just one 
just one bit of the canvas you still have so much more the possibility that you have is so much more then you will realize oh my god i'm going to exist forever i can't go on living like this let me change that will be your thought current there's a beautiful example uh i think uh, this is one of the best clicks i've had from what swamiji has shared it is like you are in a building okay and uh, you are at the ground level when you are standing in the ground level how much can you see you will see the garden the gate little bit further you will see the road let's say you go to the third floor from there you will be able to see few more buildings ahead you will be able to see a road a little further you will be able to see okay there are few more people walking on the road if you are on the seventh floor or sixth floor there you go you can see a little bit larger view you you see the road more now and you see if there are any vehicles coming you see if there are uh, how is the things going on you'll be able to see more now if someone is standing on the last floor they will be able to see the whole picture clearly now what happens it is like swamiji swamiji i will say swamiji is not even standing in the last floor he's on the helicopter or something seeing much more larger perspective but we are in the ground level when you initially when you don't know about spirituality when you don't know swamiji when you don't know proper cognition it's like you're in the ground level so you don't know where life is all about and you say oh okay that's all is my reality let me just live you go put a tent in that small in center of the road and you're living there then when you then as you meet swamiji you connect you understand it is like you are slowly elevated to the uh, fourth floor fourth level from there you see oh my god see i have been living in the wrong side the road is much more bigger i can play there is garden in the side i can go and do that you start living in that swamiji says no no still there is much more and that uh, still there is much more for you to see and he takes you up to the next level then you go to the next level and then so then it is like you're playing in the road and vehicles are coming then swamiji tells that no this is delusion there is much more you are you are living in that whole life that you have created the best there. example for this is like in practical terms if i to say just the corona virus thing the before the pandemic happening the whole of the world was in its own way like how it was going swamiji said just be alive for next Three years that is enough. I will come and give you enlightenment wherever you are. We didn't understand it. Then so what Swamiji did? He started telling, "See now, go on focusing." He told not to waste time, and he said, like when people used to come and ask, "Okay, at, uh, the point where it was getting closer to the pandemic, but still the pandemic was not known to the world." Swamiji said, "All the devotees not to go for any international travel." people didn't understand but because somji told okay we will not go to any international travel just in few days just in few days time suddenly the whole world is under lockdown this is just one practical example where we can see it like it's so obvious to us see because only when it is very nearing and at that time you catch something like this big happening you are able to see how obvious it is for you to understand he is operating from a different plane altogether and you are operating from a different plane just if you shift your gears to just strategizing your life based on what your guru is telling you will feel so blessed in your life because you don't know what you are suffering with actually i from my uh, uh, my life like one personal thing that i had is i was actually in the verge of getting diabetes itself because of my uh like i was overweight and i had lot of problems happening because of the medicines that i had taken earlier before joining gurukul still had an impact on my body so i just told to do nirahara but i could have just like in i could have responded in either two ways i could have just told no i am not able to do or i just left it telling no swamiji has told let me do it and after that my whole system is completely healed out of it that whole not even a little bit of that even the possibility to get diabetes or anything is even there in my body like this i'm sure each one of you watching this will be having tons of experiences but just this understanding that understanding the vastness and second just shifting your gears just if you are not able to see it at least 
start cognizing from what the person who's able to see everything is telling you. That's something beautiful. We have more people are sharing. Associated powerfulness and associated powerlessness. Being in tune with Kala, integrity to Kala, powerfulness of Kala is having cherished romance with life. Aging can only happen in friction of binary, in tune and out of tune with Kala. Cognition of Kalpa has ripple effect. Ditsaya has shared. That's that's a beautiful sharing. Actually, Swamiji tells these things in the, the Kala dimension, satsang, where Swamiji explains about how Kala itself is associated powerfulness and associated powerlessness in your life. And Ma Devi Karani has uh, tweeted, hashtag using the hashtag, hashtag Kailasa votes, hashtag Nityananda, Kalpa resonates with one's inner space, meaning when one matures, transforms, sees reality as it is, experiences Advaita, his inner space expands. Wholesome, this huge vastness is felt as Kalpa. Gratitude, thank you, Bhagwan and Sangha. I feel so like today reading all these different clicks, that's just expanding even my cognition, how I'm cognizing Kalpa, how the whole truth of Kalpa actually feels, it's so beautiful. And nice to see that all of you are watching and tweeting and responding. Now, just so that all of you also know, I know already some of you have already taken up the challenge. We have the Nirahara Samyama challenge. The first level is three days, second level is seven days, and third level is 21 days. By October 25th, if you're finishing, you can get ready to win some exciting gifts from Swamiji. We have four different types of the Niraharas. First is Nityananda Nirahara, where you are just going to be on liquids. Second is the Vyasa Nirahara, where you consume, where you just consume the rice and vegetables that are grown around Himalayas. And you uh, chant the Brahma Sutras. Third is Rama Nirahara, where you just consume vegetables and fruits that are mostly forest grown and you chant the Upanishads. Fourth is the Krishna Nirahara, where you con continuously consume only the dairy products. So you all can go to befoodfree.org and sign up. If you can take a few minutes. Go to befoodfree.org and sign up. We'll give you a few minutes. Well, if you can go and join and become part of this challenge. Befoodfree.org Yes, now with this, let's enter into the most awaited part of our day, which is the Nityananda Satsang. Let's enter into a small meditation. Please sit with your head, neck and spine in a straight line. Close your eyes. Breathe in and breathe out deeply and slowly. Start chanting the Mahavakya. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. Bless you all, let you all open all your three eyes and manifest the powers of Mahasura Shiva. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Shivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Shivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham Om Nityananda Paramashivoham 
ಆನಂದ ನಿತ್ಯನೇ ಸಾಟ್ರುಮಿ ಪಾಮಾಲೈ ಹೇಟ್ರಮೈ ಕಾಪಾಯೇ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ ಗುರು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ 
எதிராய் புரிந்திந்த புவி மேல் நீதம் வந்த அகந்தையில் உழன்றோம் நித்தியானந்தா கதிராய் நிலைதனை எரித்தே வழி தரும் ஒளியாய் மலர்ந்தயம் நித்தியானந்தா அருணாச்சல நித்திய அருணாச்சல நித்திய listen if you are able to see me hear me please wave your hands listen the basic principle i want to explain is in every aspect of life all these 36 principles are different aspects of life today i am giving you an example of kala tattva time principle how a unconscious ordinary human being how they grasp time maximum they are able to grasp only these three units of time earth rotating itself making one day chandra moon going around the earth making one month earth going around the sun making one year only these three basic units of time unconscious human mind is able to grasp but the consciousness which could center itself in nirvikalpa samadhi super conscious state finds he is centered in maha kailasa this whole surya mandala is going around the maha kailasa makes the fourth unit of time called kalpa listen when you don't understand the fourth unit of time kalpa you start developing very narrow vision about time life about everything any one even intellectually understands the concept of kalpa the fourth unit of time is liberated from so much of fears i tell you the permanence of existence perception about life absolutely changes the moment you understand this fourth unit of time i want see i am just revealing some of the super conscious principles i want a long vakyartha sadas to happen in every level understand because we are agitated we don't think for long time because we don't think or try to understand the multiple units of time we are just stuck with three units of time that is why all our planning all our ability to connect with the time all our ability to understand time stops with the units of years whether you calculate for 10 year or 10 million year whole thing is just within the unit called year 
But if you understand the fourth unit of time, Kalpa or Yuga, the whole realization about you, life, everything will change. This sin of one life theory will lose its base. I call it a sin because of that one life theory. So much suffering for humanity. See whether the greedy way of generating the wealth by destroying the earth It's like you are going to attend a competition, bodybuilding competition tomorrow just to get the award or the winner title. You take steroids and show the muscles which is not really built by hard work through steroids or drugs, you are ready even to die day after tomorrow after winning the title. But somehow you want to win the title. How? How unconscious human beings can go? You see, anyone when they start gymming and building muscles, the purpose is health. But when they get addicted to it and greedy about it, they are ready to die to win the title, to win the competition. How unconsciousness turns the whole purpose. Same way, wealth is for living happily long time. But when you become too greedy, you are ready to even compromise on the security of the planet Earth, safety of the planet Earth. Why do you think there is so much of carbon release and global warming and still we are not bothered about protecting the earth. The greed for the wealth, luxury has made man forget the security of the planet earth. Understand? Whatever I am talking, I am revealing the principles of superconsciousness. If you do Vakyartha Sadas, you will understand in individual life, social life, political life, and international levels, in how many ways the unconscious understandings of human beings is creating confusion. I tell you. Listen. I tell you. Listen to these basic truths. Understanding the fourth unit of the time will give you understanding about life and tremendous joy, ecstasy, fulfillment that you are going to be here for a long time. I tell you, this ability to grasp the fourth unit of time comes to you when you bring tremendous shanti in you. I sincerely request all Hindus, all my disciples who trust me, bring more and more peace inside you I can give you five major techniques to bring peace inside you. One, unclutching. Nothing like unclutching to bring peace in you. 
second chant vedic upanishads and suktas chanting of the vedic upanishads and suktas will bring loud chanting see when you chant loudly the broken thought current stuck in your system which is responsible for tiredness depression unknown illogical behaviors of you the unknown illogical behaviors of you is due to the broken irrational junk thought current sitting inside you like a undigested food if you take aritaki all the undigested food will leave you and you will be free same way if you chant loudly the vedic upanishads and suktas all the broken depressing illogical thought currents will leave you you will experience shanti peace third intense ajapa japa fourth little romantic but very powerful feeling connection with guru intense feeling connection with guru when you have a deep feeling connection with guru just listening to his words are songs on him about him by him or seeing his form any activity related to feeling connection will bring tremendous shanti peace fifth listen carefully listen very carefully first and clutching second chanting of the vedic upanishads and mantras and suktas third ajapa japa fourth feeling connection fifth any power manifestation if you sit in oneness and do any power manifestation you will add so much shanti in you understand adding shanti tattva inside you building shanti tattva inside you just like building muscles building shanti tattva is a spiritual practice building muscles is a physical practice building shanti tattva is the spiritual practice you can start doing the shanti tattva will make you realize the fourth unit of time time and thought currents is closely related if you have the high trp high number of thoughts per second you will feel like time is not moving at all you will if you are in absolute peace you will feel like time oh god days have disappeared and you are in ecstasy listen so you are inner space shanti and your ability to grasp the higher units of time is closely connected the thoughts per second tps and your ability to grasp time is highly connected especially kayakalpa yoga students this is the important lesson you need to know you need to cognize the fourth unit of time for you to master kayakalpa listen the idea you have about time is responsible for certain chemicals to be released in your body if you understand the fourth unit of time 
a unique special chemical released inside your body that is called amrita see all the gods and demons going around the meru mandara the meru hill the mahakailasa understanding the time through the vasuki snake vasuki is the, nothing but the symbolic representation of the time snake kala sarpa when that happens the body releases nectar understand the understanding i am giving now the vast understanding about the fourth unit of time if you can intellectually internalize and see in your life suddenly you will realize you have so many powerful cognitions so many powers so many wonderful things in life understand this whole kailasa i am farming to keep at least in one place on the planet earth the cosmic law cosmic law as country law cosmic principles as the country's principles i am a person will do what i want <laughs> i'll do what i want nothing can be done about it you call that as arrogance or pride or i don't care about any of your definitions i just know what i am carrying is satya sangalpa i will do what i want i will make kailasa on planet earth the maha kailasa's principles will be the principles of this country the laws of maha kailasa will be the laws of this country no one can stop it i will do it and show it only then people will understand what i am trying to do or what i am manif i was planning to manifest i'll do it now see i tell you whatever you know about me till now everything is delusion because i have to make strategies plans decisions based on the country where i was living based on their law their society how human minds react to that laws that society based on that i have to strategize plan react respond any idea you developed about me based on my action reaction responses everything is delusion because all of that is not me that is the response for your country's laws your society's actions reactions the way your unconscious mind is trained for that what best response i can give i have given only now in kailasa you are going to see the real me whatever you have seen me is reaction to your society unfortunately i have to be with unconscious society in the initial days of my manifesting of kailasa so anything you know 
whether you have incompletion about my policies, my reactions, actions, principles related to economy or the work or human beings or relationships, anything you know is delusion. Now in Kailasa, only I am going to really demonstrate who I am and manifest the real me, Paramashiva. I tell you, in the country where I was living, naturally, at any situation, at any given point, I have to act or react or respond based on those countries, societies, laws. And people who come to me also, they have to, they are bound by those laws, principles, ideas. For example, in Adi Kailasa, working more was expected as lifestyle. But in Kailasa, sitting more is going to be expected as a lifestyle. The more you sit unclutched, the more you are going to be glorified. <laughs> because we just need 10,000 human beings to sit unclutched and radiate that intense Shanti. The intense Shanti into the universe to nullify the collective negativity. We need more gods for planet Earth, less human. But unfortunately in Indian society, When you don't work, you only fall into tamas. Your body is trained. The food, thought currents, lifestyle, everything. Either you are active or sleeping, confused, lethargic, depressed, not in Turiya. But the food style, lifestyle, everything in Kailasa will be. You are unclutched. Unclutched, unclutched, the more you are unclutched, more intensely active you are. More you are in Turiya, more active. More you are in Turiya Atita, more strategically active. Lifestyle, food style, everything. And understandings about life. I tell you, just this one principle, understanding the fourth unit of time. I am not even explaining the whole Surya Siddhanta. Surya Siddhanta explains not only the unit of Kala, there is something called where the Kala takes turn, means what the, see Kala is described as the Serpent eating its own tail. Snake eating its own tail continuously. That eating, how it just pulls its tail and swallows, that is called happening, event. I will give you a small understanding about these events of time. Like how I explained the units of time, Listen to the event of time. Earth rotates itself. Moon not only goes round the earth, it also rotates itself. Earlier I said, earth was kept, sorry, moon was kept as a satellite and it doesn't rotate for a different purpose, for a different understanding. Later on I will talk about that, why I made that statement. The comparative 
parameters with which I was comparing there it was different and now the statement I am making is different don't be confused now listen to this statement then you will understand this whole principle I am trying to explain earth moves rotates itself and goes round the sun same way moon rotates itself and goes round the earth and sun rotates itself and goes round the maha kailasa in this movements listen carefully the unit of time is dependent on the actions events of time is this self rotation and going around another body criss crossing of that is event for example because moon goes round the earth and earth is going around the sun this criss crossing is the eclipse at one point this criss crossing happens means sun is covered by the moon or moon is covered by the sun this criss crossing that is called events eclipses same way sun rotating itself and going around the maha kailasa creates multiple events not just unit it creates multiple events now i'll only give you the basic understanding about the events let's i will reveal the events of kala tattva later now understand the units of kala tattva and also understand how by not understanding the units of kala tattva we are all collectively suffering and started believing suffering is natural no suffering is neither natural nor inevitable hey, with the right understandings it doesn't even exist the visionaries are convinced suffering is inevitable so the followers are also convinced suffering is inevitable that is the biggest suffering that is the real delusion that is the real delusion units of time and events of time in suri siddhanta snake eating its own tail every swallowing is considered as event a full snake body eaten by itself is called unit so for earth rotating itself there's a unit and events moon rotating itself there is unit and events moon going around the earth there is unit and events earth going around the sun there is unit and events sun going around the maha kailasa there is unit and events now 
let us look at only the fourth unit of time the fourth unit of time is cognized by the mind which lives in nirvikalpa samadhi and even if all of you have not achieved the nirvikalpa samadhi if you understand the principles from a person who lives in nirvikalpa samadhi and makes that as a lifestyle you will enjoy all the benefits of the nirvikalpa samadhi for example einstein's theory all of us may not understand but many benefits derived from that theory we are all enjoying in our life because we decided to accept these theories same way the fourth unit of time this theory all of you may not be able to grasp it but if you decide to accept and enjoy make this theory as a part of you you will enjoy all the benefits of these truths benefits of this theory that is what i call living enlightenment till you realize personally individually as your own enlightenment living it because your guru has revealed it making that as your vision because your guru has revealed it is living enlightenment i tell you if you have intense feeling connection with guru celebrate you are a blessed one because so many realizations without you waiting to achieve you will start getting the benefits of it you will start reaping the benefits of guru's realizations without you waiting to achieve it personally see you not enjoying the benefits till you reach that space personally is waste of time till you understand all the principles of electricity if you say i will not use fan or air cooler or heater or lights you are a fool you learn no doubt learning is good encouraged but till you learn don't say i will not use the benefits i will not enjoy the benefits so you should get enlightened but don't be fool to tell till i am enlightened i will not enjoy the benefits of the enlightened realities and truths and principles enjoying the benefits and realities and principles all the benefits of enlightenment even before personally achieving it due to your trust on the guru is living enlightenment jeevan mukti let's do vakya sadasan this fourth unit of time yuga kalpa i'll continue in the further satsangs sorry for the technical glitch in between actually i left the jata open but only after a few minutes i realized only if the jata is there as the weight on my head i am able to be very grounded and able to talk to all of you continuously without the jata weight on the head just system shoots up into samadhi <laughs> that's the reason i tied the jata and started the satsang again so with this i bless you all let's all move to paramashiva gana session and i also want to thank all the volunteers kailashians who are sincerely working in paramashiva gana projects even though i am not sitting every day for the all the sessions see somebody working when i am actively following up is different 
but so many of you are sincerely working knowing that i am in samadhi even though i am not following up i am not attending to all the meetings i am not following up with everyone i am in samadhi but you are sincerely working that is the extreme chastity understand when the king is in palace you being chaste is not something great that is a lifestyle but when the king has gone for some hunting or a war in those days they go for tirtha yatra or the hunting or war or some purposes at that time also when you are chaste that's a real absolute pure dedication so all those volunteers paramashiv ganas who are sincerely working i am seeing such large amount of work is happening the hinduism pdi is ready which is going to be released on vijay, vijay dasami day earlier i planned for 100000 page thanks to hinduism pdi team they already crossed 1 million page now it's ready i actually thought the hinduism pdi we will release it with 100000 page on vijay dasami and then start building in next two years i wanted to make it as a million pages and down the line five years at least billion page we should be the largest wiki resource for hinduism that was my plan but the team has worked so sincerely every had soft all hinduism pedia teamily i'm so happy you guys did it already we have crossed million page we have not even published it crossed million page and whole thing is legally properly collected without violating any copyright everything is legitimate if somebody has copyrighted we approach them and get them to give us the copyright or if they have declared that they don't have a copyright and anyone can use it we acknowledge them properly give our gratitude to them for making that material available to us everything is very organized systematic legitimate which will be up for vijay dasami so now i am feeling within next two years we can make it into billion pages because we already crossed million we can make it into billion pages because the scriptures we collected is not it added in this million page that is there another 20 million books in that we are now working with every publisher getting copyright all that legal work is going on if all that is done properly we will be easily crossing billion page thanks to the team which is working all over the world sincerely intensely even though i am not personally following up or managing even though i am in samadhi thanks to your chastity absolute commitment and chastity and sincerely working even while i am in samadhi i tell you whoever is working for kailasa when i am in samadhi all the gifts i get from kailasa belongs to you will be showered on you all the auspiciousness energy blessings everything goes to you and blessings to everyone who is actively part of building kailasa making kailasa happen so with this i bless you all let's all radiate with integrity authenticity responsibility enriching causing living shuddhatvaita saivam the state space powers being super consciousness and kailasa of parama shiva 
பரமசிவோகம் ஓம் நித்யானந்த பரமசிவோகம் த எட்டர்னல் பிளிஸ் நித்யானந்தா தேங்க் யூ பி பிளிஸ்ஃபுல்